And my name is Rick Hanton. Uh, I'm from SkyTouch Technology, which is part of Choice Hotels. So, first off, what is Selenium WebDriver? And just to be fair, uh, I'm kind of explaining a little bit more about the WebDriver because um, that's the part of Selenium that I'm familiar with, so I'll be talking mostly about that. Um, I will go over some of the other parts uh, in passing, so um, bear with me. Here's um, kind of the basics. So basically, Selenium is a functional automated test tool for your web applications. Um, one of the awesome things about it is it's open source. Um, there's a couple different open source tools out there. There's a lot of closed source paid tools as well. Um, Selenium is probably one of the most popular open source ones. So there's lots of example code, lots of um, ideas around it, lots of frameworks built um, kind of on top of it that can help you with it. Um, the biggest thing for me and for a lot of people is, and one of the reasons it's so popular is that while initially Selenium was coded um, on top of JavaScript, um, it now supports all kinds of different popular languages. Um, at least the web driver does. So there's libraries for Java, C Sharp, Ruby, Python, Node.js, you name it, um, your favorite thing for web development, there's probably some kind of um, toolkit for your language. So it makes it super duper duper easy um, to utilize along with your normal code base because you can apply the same developers to develop Selenium code as develop your web application. It also um, supports lots of different browsers, which is another plus point. Um, so the main ones being uh, originally it was developed around Firefox, um, has tons of support for Chrome, um, Internet Explorer, which is big um, for a lot of like legacy applications, uh, Opera, um, I didn't put here. Um, there's some headless browsers that are also supported, so that's that's nice if you don't care about the actual like UI. Um, visible UI of the browser. You just want to test some other things. Um, it's um, the other thing that's big about it is that there's all kinds of um, kind of toolkits you can run with it, and um, there's a lot of tooling so you can do things like run multiple tests at once, get your testing done faster. Um, you know, basically instead of having you know needing X number of people to do your testing um, by pushing buttons on your system. Now you can have zero people and have like Jenkins or some kind of CI automation um, run testing using um, eight or 10 or 20 different browsers at once. Um, and so not only does your testing get done much faster, but it's also, you can do it on different browsers. You can do it like nightly. You can do it par as part of a automated build process, automated deployment process. Um, it's really great. So a little bit of the history on Selenium. Um, I thought that was kinda, this was kind of interesting. So ThoughtWorks Incorporated developed Selenium back in the early 2000s. Uh, it basically came out of some annoyance that uh, Jason Huggins and his team had with the uh, older HP Mercury toolkit. Um, Basically, so they created Selenium saying, we're going to create Selenium supplements to cure our mer mercury problem, uh, uh, mercury poisoning. So uh, that's where the name came from. The original tool was basically just a way, uh, like a, a plugin to like Firefox that would send JavaScript commands to the browser to have it do certain things, um, which is kind of a smart idea. Um, Google became a big early user of that of that early tool, and at Google, um, a, a developer called Simon Stewart basically realized that there was a lot of downfall. There was a lot of things you couldn't do with Selenium, um, certain manipulations of the browser that um, were just tricky, and so he created this idea of a web driver to solve limitations in the early um, Selenium product. Um, and then what happened eventually was that the web driver and Selenium got together as compete, kind of almost competing standards in a way. Um, but they got together, they merged them together into in Selenium 2.0 in 2008, and now they're kind of going a little bit the the opposite direction um, because in Selenium 2 you could um, you could provide support for whatever browsers you needed via 
um, libraries, like basically web, web driver libraries um, for that. But now they're trying to split it out so the web driver is not part of any library for any particular um, language. It's going to be a separate standalone executable program, um, which is kind of what it typically always has been. Um, but it's it's basically something that you have to point um, via like system properties, point your Selenium 3.0 application to that driver for whatever browser you want to run. Um, or if you're running on multiple browsers, you have to point it to multiple web driver drivers for each um, browser type. Um, and then if you also also to know if you um, ins so yeah, and you have to install those drivers, and if you have your uh, web browser executable in kind of an odd location that's abnormal for your operating system, you might have to actually uh, configure the driver a little bit to tell it exactly where to point to the executable for the browser. So uh, yeah, things have changed a lot over the years. Um, you know, one of the reasons it's so heavily adopted is it's been around a long time, so that's great. Selenium, uh, basically, there's two major parts. If you read Selenium documentation, you'll, you'll basically see probably one of the two of these things. Um, the Selenium integrated development environment is basically an in-browser, um, I guess I probably said this wrong a little bit, but um, it, it's basically designed for non-coders um, to be this friendly little UI um, that allows you to record the process that you that a that a human um, quality tester would use to uh, push buttons and work their way through a web application, um, and then save that recording for later um, in such a way that it can be played back. So. Um, uh, especially for tests that you have to do again and again and again, maybe on every release of a web application. Um, it's kind of a great little way to basically, you know, have it hit all these buttons or whatever for you, um, just exactly like it did it last time. You know, you don't have to do anything special. It's great. Um, it's basically Firefox only right now. As a, it's a plugin to Firefox. Um, and I've seen some stuff around like Chrome plugins for it that people have ported over, but um, I'm not sure how well they work. Um, and then, so that's the IDE, and I'll show you that in a minute. The web driver is um, a little bit different. It's basically, it does the same things. Um, so basically the IDE records all these steps. The web driver is not so much based around steps, um, which is kind of too bad. Um, it, it really needs that nomenclature would be nifty. But uh, you can add that on top of Selenium, basically. And But basically, it's a library to uh, write code in your, code, your favorite coding language of the, the bunch I mentioned previously. And that code is then able to create a web driver which um, drives the browser of your choice, and then you use that web driver to control the browser. So from the web driver, you can get a hook to the browser. You can have the browser do certain things. You can have uh, you can basically get DOM elements out of the browser for whatever page it's on, and analyze those in a lot of different ways. It's um, very extensible. It's great, um, and it basically helps you create a more reliable, business-friendly. Um, testing application, which is a big deal um, for for large companies. Um, so I'm going to jump on my presentation here for a sec. I will now show you a little bit of the IDE. Um, I'm not um, here. I'll just show you. So go to my Firefox add-ons. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, get on. Yes, yeah, so, so here's my Selenium ID. Um, it, you just get it out of like you get any other plugin in, in Firefox, technically. Just go to the shop, you can grab it. Um, it's great. It's got, you know, um, a variety of different like, preferences and stuff you can set if you need to um, do things kind of a certain way. Um, yeah. Um, I'll talk about those uh, formats and stuff in here. Pretty cool. Um, 
No, you can actually, so you can actually, like, record in Firefox and then play back in the, and, you know, do it, use a web driver to play back into the browser, which is pretty cool. Um, you might have to do a little bit of setup, but uh, that's pretty nifty. So, yeah, awesome. Um, basically, what happens is you go to Tools in your browser, pull up the Selenium ID. It takes a minute. And okay, so now I got the little Selenium ID going on. This is what you can see of it. Yeah, it got a little forked up here. Um, yeah, so basically what happens is I can go to actions and record. It looks like it's recording already. And so I'll go like to Google. Okay, my Google page is going to load. I'm going to click Selenium. And I'm going to click on this guide here. Oh, selenium is mineral found in the soil. It's important to know. Sorry, that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to go back in the browser. And. Oh, here we go. Here's what I want selenium HQ. I'm going to go here. All right, so pretty simple. Just clicking around. Uh, I may want to go to the the download page, it's Lenium HQ. May I go to documentation now and I'm gonna go get a brief history of the project. It's great, lots of history. Very nice. Oh no I found oh it's got something linked to the Selenium grid, maybe I want that. Um, you get the idea, so like whatever web application you have, you click around, you're doing things, you're making sure all the all the links work and all the fields work and uh, all those good things. So anyhow, I'll go back now to, oh, look, in my IDE, and I have lots of stuff going on, lots of commands. Okay, great. So I'm going to stop recording, and maybe I'll call this project... Um, save test case as uh, uh, learn about selenium. Okay, so now I've got that. We created another test case called something different. It's kind of how it all works. Um, and then, so I'll select this. Uh, and basically, so it's got this idea of test cases and then test suites, which are multiple test cases. Um, so now you can actually do playback. So let's try playback, let's see how that goes. Okay, so let's go into Google. It's uh, searching for Selenium. Remember I did that. Okay, we found. Yeah, questionable. This case failed. Oh, didn't work there. Let's try it once more. Google. Google search might be throwing it for a loop a little bit. Okay, well, let's get rid of this. Seems like this doesn't work very well. Okay, let's try it without that. Okay, save it again. Google. Selenium.
Let's change this to a click and wait. Okay, still having issues. So this is why the ID is kind of sometimes known as known to be a bit uh, problematic. So here's what I'm gonna do. Insecure site. Okay, there we go. Now it's going to slam HQ directly. We click on the documentation link. Uh, click down brief history of Selenium. And it looked like it looks like it had a problem with getting the ID what's in this book. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Anyhow, so that's kinda like how this works. Um, Kind of like you saw, it's a little bit hit or miss. Um, stuff works, stuff doesn't work. Um, a lot of the selector portions can kind of fork things up pretty good. Um, but the neato thing from this that uh, I want to mention is that you can actually export this directly as like a Java test ng web driver or Ruby. Uh, apparently they don't like JavaScript. That's too bad. <laughs> um, yeah, so say like I wanted to have this hit by test ng, whatever. I'll call it test. My desktop will be fun. Um, and then I could actually let's see if I can go up and then Mm, cool. So I probably, probably need to go to Java. Yeah, yeah, you can, if you know Java, you can see this is Java code. Um, basically, it built a test class. Um, here's a web driver. Um, 
And it's using test ng annotations here, so it's got before class, um, basically set up a Firefox driver, base URLs, selenium hq, um, all this nice good stuff. Um, then you can see, kind of see it's doing what I told it to do. It's using the base URL, selenium plus slash. It goes to find the download link, it clicks it. It goes to find the documentation link, it clicks it. It goes to find the uh, brief history of the Selenium project link, it clicks it. And it's doing these implicit weights um, in there too, so it should be good. And then it takes down the driver. Um, it's got a checker to check if elements are present. It's got a couple of different things or whatever. Um, yeah, pretty nifty. So, you know, that's actually some pretty relatively usable Java code. And it's just auto generate for you. Very nice. So, yeah, that's awesome. Lots of fun. That's the ID. Um, so, most of this presentation, like I said, is going to be about the web driver. That's kind of part two. That's the all, all code type part of the Selenium. Um, another interesting feature of Selenium is the um, remote control Selenium. So there's kind of this concept of um, like that code I was just showing you, you create a web driver and a web driver basically is meaning like a, a local web driver. Um, you, know, you can also create a remote web driver and a remote web driver is supposed to control a remote control server um, that's part of Selenium RC and that remote control server itself then controls a bunch of kind of clients and the client um, VMs or whatever you want, you know, uh, Docker containers, whatever it might be. Um, those clients should have a some type of web browser on them um, and then they have this like little tiny client software that basically like uh, plugs in. It's basically like a little mini and then yeah, it basically needs the web, it needs the browser, the driver for the browser and then it's got this other little software running on top that's pinging the driver and sending commands from remote control server, from um, you know, wherever you're launching commands from, be it uh, like we like to do in Jenkins or you know, something like that, um, or maybe from your local machine, whatever the case might be. Um, so that's remote control, so that's fun. Um, uh, kind of like I met, alluded to earlier, um, it can make your tests go a lot faster because you can have one remote control server that's running a whole bunch of different, you know, multiple tests at the same time on, you know, 5, 10, 20 different client machines. Um, and those are all acting as like separate users, separate browsers, all hitting your single application at the same time. So, uh, lots of good fun. Um, there's some really nifty ways to stand up that environment. Um, uh, one guy out on Docker has like some really great Docker containers for it. Um, they just hook all the Docker containers together um, on a like we do it on a AWS machine, and then ta-da, you have a nice um, Selenium remote control grid. And there's also something called it, that's basically a, it's called the Selenium grid. That's what kind of is the that com that confluence of the all those machines on your remote system that you're testing with. So anyhow, um, that's a little bit about remote control. Um, I won't get too deep into that. Um, before getting into uh, Selenium examples with code, um, I just want to go over kind of a little bit about um, good design principles um, generally. The principles I wanted to mention are one, uh, there's the POM, the page object model, and that's this concept of um, logically separating your test data, your test pages, and your test services. And what does that mean? So test data would be like data that you're plugging into a page or you're validating on a page. That's your your data. So you'd have like a um, in Java we call it a plain we call it a plain old Java object. You got a POJO of just data, um, so you set up, a, you know, set 
fields of data or whatever in this data object. And then you would pass that data object off to a service and the service is actually going to um, get a hook to um, a Java page object that represents the web page uh, that it's going to plug all that data into or validate that data on, whatever the case might be. Um, so it's kind of this nice little separation of like for every page in your web application, you'd have a page object representation um, that'll stay in sync with the web application and then um, the services touch the pages, the data gets plugged into services. Nice little, um, you might have like validators that also get the data and then validate the page. Um, kind of similar to a service. Um, it's a good little way of doing things and it makes things pretty robust. Um, you want to create robust uh, and reusable services. Um, that your test code can call again and again in different ways. Um, that's important and you'll see why later once we get into um, a little bit more BDD um, in the, towards the end. You want to um, state is tricky so if you have a stateful web application that can cause some problems um, because uh, like what we do is we create new state each time so um, like our state is like a um, at SkyTouch is like a hotel or something like that um, on our system and so we create a new hotel each time that gives us kind of a clean slate so our tests are always getting the same expectations every time of this kind of clean slate environment um, if you're writing tests that are based upon a certain data set in, a, in your database or your data storage you know, part of the application um, that could cause problems because as soon as somebody tweaks that data set um, in some fashion, now all your testing is broken. So that's that's a pain. Um, you want to spend as little time as possible creating like preconditions or creating data that you need for your testing. It's just uh, kind of a pain. Um, basically, if you can if you have to do preconditioning things, if you can get away with like using services to set up all that data stuff behind the scenes before you start in on your Selenium testing, that's great. Um, you know, do what you gotta do. And um, oops, sorry. And then oh, and then the other the last thing I guess I had was um, it's important like you'll kind of pick it up as you start using Selenium, but you'll eventually figure out you probably want to do certain things to, in your code base to structure your code to actually support Selenium testing. So whether that is um, the IDs, the classes in your code, um, stuff like that that Selenium needs to hook onto to actually pull out um, elements, DOM elements from your web application. Um, you know, you'll probably get better at figuring out how to make that work nicely for you and, and kind of do things in a, in a rational way. Okay, so here's uh, starting my examples. The Basically what I'm trying to do with an example, um, and the success is questionable here, but I want it to go to reddit.com, I want it to log in using some credentials, I want to submit a new post and um, it's going to do it in a certain URL, a certain title, a certain subreddit, and then it's going to search for that new post afterwards and verify that the title and the URL are correct. So, pretty simple. That's what I want to do. That's my test plan. Okay, so I have a, I have a demo using testng, kind of like that example code I pulled up, um, of using the web driver. And all this code is at my GitHub, at github.com slash Hanton R, H-A-N-T-O-N-R, and then slash selenium dash testng is this piece of code. So let me pull it up, make sure I got the right one. There. So here's, here's my code. Um, it's only a few different, you know, maybe 10 or 11 
uh, classes, a few things. Um, I'll show you what I've got in terms of libraries for Java. So, um, I guess the big thing you might notice is I I started this with the I created this with like the Spring initializer. Um, so I have Spring Boot, um, Nifty for lots of reasons. Um, so I've got Spring kind of underneath here, giving me some dependency dependency injection, um, which is kind of important. And you'll see in a minute that's uh, one of the tricky things is that the web driver needs to be kind of passed around to different classes for different reasons. So by using dependency injection to create it and then um, kind of pass it back and forth, auto wired and um, that just kind of makes my life easy. So that's why I'm doing that. Uh, we got JUnit, because I have some JUnit certs. I have uh, Selenium Java is the main API to for the web driver, um, so that's important. Um, TestNG is kind of my little tests, testing framework on top of everything, making everything work nicely. Um, and then, um, very important, so I'm using Selenium 3.0.1. Um, so with version 3, because you need those property hooks to the web driver that you're actually utilizing. Um, I'm like an easy way to solve that problem because you have to like your web driver has to be like the latest version and keep up with the you know auto updating version of your web browser, things like that. Um, basically what I found to be super useful for at least for local testing, for other testing, um, you gotta do different things. But for local testing you can use this web driver manager. And basically, what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to do some initialization and basically like make sure that I have the right version of the web driver for the browser I'm trying to test with. And if I don't, it downloads the right one, installs it, sets it up, um, does all those things for me. It's uh, kind of a nice uh, a nice library to have. Um, so yeah, those are I mean pretty simple. Not a lot of libraries, just a couple things. Um, so. To go in here, here's my tests, or tests, two tests, like I was showing. Um, so, like you see, I have the web driver. driver. Um, I'm auto wiring in some services that I'm using to, to get stuff done. And then, um, so this at test annotation, that's test ng, uh, basically indicating that this is a test that needs to run. Um, you can do a lot of interesting things. So I put on like groups here. So groups is some is a way to like tell it to run specific test groups. Um, may you just want to run one group and not all tests, or you want to exclude a certain group, you can do that too. Um, it's kind of kind of nifty. We use it a lot. Um, you can do things with like priority. So um, here I'm telling it priority ten, priority twenty. I'm telling it to run this. Always run this method first. Um, which is good because it's kind of the setup method, right? Um, so create the pages I need. I'm saying login service dot login. Um, then it submits. It clicks the submit link button. Click. Um, it goes and tries to post this link, the link, and the uh, subreddit. And then after it posts the link, um, it should come to. If, it, if it's successful, it should come to the page with the link and the title of the post should be should contain failure and the number of likes should be one because nobody else has liked it yet. It's brand new. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. Um, here I'm using driver.git and getting a specific um, URL and then checking that my new thing appears there. And so this is just the high level. If you want to look under the hood, um, let's go to like login. Okay, so we go to the login service. Here's kind of what's going on. Um, same thing, I need the web driver for a couple things in here. So um, bringing that, pulling that in. And um, you can see here, basically I'm checking if we're on the right URL, if not, this is actually calling another calling to another service, the browser service, and telling it to go there. Um, and then it gets each of the fields it needs and um, sends in the username, sends in the password, um, clicks remember me, clicks login, 
Um, and then we get to um, one of the more wonderful parts about um, Selenium is that you need to basically wait for um, whatever request you just made to actually process. So you're waiting, um, you'll have to wait a little bit because of network latency, all these other things. Selenium doesn't take care of that for you on its own. So you have to, you know, um, kind of like the other code I was showing. Bring that back up. So kind of like in here where, where was it? So it's creating like an implicit 30 second timeout. Um, that's one way to do things. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a wait um, on my web driver and then I'm waiting until a certain condition happens. So in this case, it's, uh, it's actually kind of a smart idea, but basically when I log in, it waits to see basically the page to reload and then you should see the logout button be visible and so that's what it's waiting for. So not too bad. And then there's a lot of other things like underlying this. So like you can see where it's calling list page a whole bunch. And so list page you can see in the page object model here. It's using these find by annotations to distinguish what it's looking for. So in here it's looking for ID header, it's looking for some specific CSS to get lists of tabs, and it's looking for ID, this one's looking for things. Things are like the posts that come up in Reddit on a page with a big list of them, those are things. So this just gets all the things, stuff like that. Um, if I went over here to the list page service, so here's my like get all things method that gets the list page and then does get things, just returns it. Here's the submission service that's doing similar things, sending some keys. Um, it basically like this wait here is waiting up to 10 seconds um, while Reddit does some requests to like try and figure out what the suggested title should be and so once it has something for that I say yes use the expected title or the sorry the uh, auto created title basically that their servers create and then it submits and then it waits until the next page comes up kind of thing so you know there's a lot of things where it's like every time you move to a new page you might need to wait um, unless you have like a really fast JavaScript single page application or something you might, you might be able to just go forward. Um, so yeah, keep it's a lot of like hurry up and wait, whatever, things like that. Um, so that's kind of how the code works. It's uh, not too bad. Um, if you use a different language, it's going to be really similar. Um, same things and concepts. Uh, that there's a browser that you can um, send URLs to you and have it do certain things and have it act a certain way. Uh, yeah, not too bad. That's kind of how things work. Go back here. Uh, now I'm going to talk briefly about. So that's one way to do it with TestNG. And TestNG, um, usually run TestNG with like sweet files, and they're basically XML files that tell it which test to run or which, you know, exclude, exclude, like I was talking about earlier. Um, an alternative to TestNG is to use some kind of BDD framework, um, such as in this case I used Cucumber. Um, basically, it does, it's all about behavior-driven development. Um, so the idea being that there's this English, you know, basically English language um, set of instructions that probably initially should be written by some kind of product manager saying, like, here's the story I want you to do. And here's these expected, if when I do these things, here's the expected outcome that should happen. 
that's basically what cucumber is all about. Um, it's also really nice if you know you could use it in this way, where you know maybe you have a non-technical QA quality department, and so you might be okay with them writing these cucumber test cases to test things out pretty quickly. Um, but uh, you know maybe you don't want them like writing the code, and so you can split it up and you have developers write code like kind of robust code um, functions steps for cucumber and then you can have um, the quality people use those to write case test cases basically so I have the second one um, same github except for this one selenium cucumber instead of selenium test ng So here's Cucumber, pretty much the same imports, everything the same, except for now, like, we don't have that test um, class anymore, got rid of that. And we just have this .feature file. Basically it's all written in a language called Gherkin. So kind of like I had smoke test on the other thing, you could have kind of these tags on the feature file as well. Um, explain what the feature is, what the scenario is, and then you can do all these things. So, like, given one thing happened when I do this action, when I do another action, then I'm expecting something to be true, false, the other way. So, um, it's nice, it's even readable. You can have people who aren't coders write this stuff. Um, but then what you can see is all of these things are actually functions that are happening. So, like, I am logged into Reddit. That's basically running, that's the same login function we were talking about a minute ago. Not too bad. Um, like this one, I post the link. So, see how they're using, like, we're using, like, a dot star in here to represent strings or whatever variable is coming in. And then it's going to have to match up with here where it's string link, string subreddit name. And we go in. We basically do all these. Yeah. Basically, I check if the link's okay. Um, send in some keys. Uh, might have to wait until the suggested title comes up. When it does come up, we click it. Um, and then we submit things. Yeah, not too hard. Um, just have to add the right annotations and the right classes, and you're, ready, ready, you're off to the races. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all this. Uh, let me show you. So. So like page object, it was actually something I created to uh, use this page factory that Selenium provides to initialize all the elements. So when we're pulling out individual page element or page object elements, um, it knows where all these things are because they were initialized on the page. But yeah, you can have some CSS in here, go do all the things we need, and all is good. Yeah, I mean, Cucumber works just as good. Um, just like TestNG, there's ways, there's some easy ways in Cucumber where, like, you can see how I've got these different variables in here. You could have, like, changing variables, like, go through lists of variables and run the same test steps, but with slightly different variables. So, um, overall, like, kind of a nice idea how that works. Uh, but that's Cucumber in a very short nutshell. Um, like I said, if you use other languages, it's going to be really similar. Um, please, I encourage you to download. Um, there's a little bit of setup steps, but basically download my GitHub repos, um, play around with them, 
you know, change up the, I, I would basically have to go in here and change the Reddit constants, which is basically the username and password, and then you might want to change these variables a little bit. Um, yeah, maybe I'll change this to, uh, let's go find something different. So I'm a big space nut, so we'll find some cool space news. Sounds, this is cool to me. I like this. Three split robots in spaces. We got okay. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'll see if I can set up to run this. I'm looking for robots. Okay, and then I'm going to run through this and show you how it goes. Let's see, my testing started here. And this is all the setup of the web driver and everything. So I'm going to open the browser now that it opened when it created the web driver. You can see it, oh, it's going to Reddit. Great. I uh, plugged in my username and password. Okay, got there. We hit submit link. Now it's going to plug in the link information. Space subreddit. Oh, and it kicked me out. It said, you're, you're evil, you're a bot, you're submitting stuff. We don't like you. Um, but you kind of saw what I was doing. I was going through all the, all the motions. Um, I could just do this scenario, so let's do the scenario. This should actually I can fix this quick. Edit space. Go we'll find something that's there. Mystic Mountain. Okay, how about that? Plug in a good space by the mystic. Say go just run the scenario. working there. Okay, so now it's just going to go to our space and look for a link with the title Mr. Fun. I found it. All's good. And shut down the browser. It was easy. Super fast. Super, super quick. And that's one of the nice things about Selenium is like, even though you might have to put in weights and things like that, um, it's still going to be very fast, um, probably even compared to your human testers. So that uh, it's definitely a nice benefit. Um, and even the other thing too is like if you use faster browsers like Chrome, um, it's going to work faster than 
running my uh, so also nice so feature um so that's um that's pretty much it of what i've got for selenium um just go out and try the examples play around um try using the ide and then creating code from that that's you know definitely one nice way of, of getting started or kind of shortening your development cycle on selenium um if you need ideas on how to build projects there's a lot of good example code out there so just go look around and find good stuff um, yeah understand this is a this is definitely a nice way to automate your your uh, uh, UI testing strategy the uh, um, just to give you a little bit of background example about like how we use this um, we so at uh, SkyTouch we have an application that has uh, over a thousand uh, JSP pages now it's not exactly like that many web pages and more like pop-ups and things but I mean there's, there's many hundreds of like different pages in the application so we have to like represent all those in selenium and run tests against them um, and obviously with that much that big of an app um, it actually causes a lot of problems because um, if we have human testers test that it takes like months for them to get through um, doing regression tests on the whole thing and so because of that, they generally don't do full regression tests. They just do pieces and parts and kind of whatever they can manage. Um, the nice thing with Selenium is like now we've taken all that work that they do, uh, wrote up test cases for as much stuff as we possibly could, and then we go and um, created Selenium tests out of it. And so we can we now have these Selenium tests that will run. Uh, there's like 1,900 of them now, and we can basically go run those in parallel against a single environment on a Selenium grid um, and it takes like five, six hours or whatever for a task that would take humans, like a whole bunch of humans, like weeks. Um, so huge like time savings there, making this process a lot easier and smoother. So um, and definitely a great way to go to test out your application, whether it be big or small. Um, you can probably get a lot of benefit out of it. And like I said, you can you can make this part of your. You could have it do testing every night and see how things turn out. You could have it be part of a uh, build uh, CI build process or a CI um, production deploy process that it runs these Selenium tests and ensures that they'll pass or something like that. Uh, there's lots of great ways to use it. There's um, a variety of different frameworks to lay on top of Selenium to help you in different languages. Um, lots of great things you can do. Um, really nice framework to use. I've been using it for years. Um, if you have any other questions or um, you know, want to know more, um, check out the documentation online. Um, or you know, feel free to try and reach out to me, and uh, I'll, I'll try and answer whatever I can. So thanks for listening. Um, good luck. Happy, happy testing in Selenium. And um, I'll see you next time I do a cool presentation. Thanks.